I'll tell you what, I've been desperately trying to make myself nice and patient so I could wait for everything to be properly done prior to starting my distillation. And, um, I can't do it. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's like um, it's almost like it's almost like a problem, really, because in doing this fermentation, I've made a few mistakes from the outset. And I am thinking, like, have those mistakes got the potential to have an impact upon the work that I've done so far? Uh, to which the answer is, of course, yes. What haven't I done? I didn't boil the water first. I just used hot tap water from the bath. Um, although I sterilized the barrel and the lid of the fermentation bin, which is what you're supposed to do, okay, that's fine. Um, I also put the yeast into water to try and rehydrate the yeast prior to putting it into the fermentation bin. Because the yeast foamed up tremendously the moment I put it into a separate container with some water, I then had to put all the sugar quickly into the fermentation bin as well as the yeast quite quickly. So I did not fully dissolve all the sugar. And during that process, there may have been some opportunities for some infections to get into the actual fermenting stuff. Uh, if that is the case, we could have an inefficient fermentation uh, that's happened here. Now, today is Monday night. I started this fermentation on Wednesday lunchtime. It's supposed to be left for seven days. So that's Wednesday lunchtime to Thursday lunchtime to Friday lunchtime, Saturday lunchtime, Sunday lunchtime, Monday lunchtime stroke afternoon. That's five and a half days it's been left. So about one and a half days short. The quantity of bubbles being produced by the fermenting wash has gone down quite dramatically although there is still some carbon dioxide being produced. So I'm planning on doing one distillation tonight uh, from my 4 litre pot still and then measuring the percentage of that to see whether anything's come out. See whether anything comes out at all. Remember there's still, I mean that's a 5 litre, uh, sorry, a 5 gallon bucket. So I'll be taking out just under 1 gallon, leaving another 3 to 4 for me to try and get more spirit from. Remember that the yeast can go up to 23%. I get a feeling that if I wasn't an impatient little prick, and if I left it for nearly two weeks rather than just the one which is prescribed, I will probably get the highest yield of nearly 23%. I don't think I've got anywhere near that right now. Because you can buy yeast which ferment over 24 hours. The other mistake I made is I didn't check the specific gravity prior to fermentation starting and after it, so I couldn't, cannot get a, uh, a fix on how much alcohol is actually in that container right now. One thing I can tell you is the smell in my flat has changed dramatically. On the first day, everything smelt of yeast, a bit like uh, Marmite or some similar um, Vegemite type stuff. It was disgusting. Then, after a day or so, the fragrance changed to that of living yeast, which smells very different. And from that to the smell of, you know, those um, poorly finished off pink champagnes that you get. The ones which are still, which, which are bottled when they're still fermenting to put the fizz into it. And now all of that smell is gone. All the smell of fermenting has basically subsided. There's still a bulge on the lid of my fermentation bin, and there's still a bit of a, zzz, you know, bubbliness going on inside but that's about all so let's put some alcohol into my distiller and see whether we can get one distillation off I have my spirit hydrometer at the ready here so I can measure the strength of the spirit which comes off and we'll see whether we get anything 
Okay, that's the yeasty wash in the distiller body itself. It looks disgusting. It looks like pea soup or something crazy. And there you'll see on the lid, there's some dried yeast foam. So when it was going and going big time, it was foaming right up to the top. It's now much less, okay? So it was very active, it now isn't. But it's still kind of fermenting. So, get the lid on that, turn it on, I'll put the boil, um, boil enhancers in there as well to try and reduce the likelihood of surge boiling and making my flat stink of beer and we'll see what we can do. We've actually got some alcohol coming out. It's about 20 minutes into the experience. So I think this might actually be quite strong. We might be able to get some good stuff out of this. First run has checked on the spirit hydrometer. Just shy of 60% alcohol by volume. And so we're probably talking about 59-58% ABV. That's beautiful. It's also very scary, but it's also very beautiful. Now this is actually a little more worrying. We're about 42 minutes in, and the measurements here, let's put the thermometer in the, test, in the tube as well, just to take up a bit of extra space. It's bobbing around the 25 to 30 mark, suggesting we got much less concentration. So as far as am I generating fuel alcohol here, I don't think so. So I think it'd be worthwhile mixing what I've got here in with um, the current quantity, which is there. Think about a quarter of a litre and anything else I'm getting off there, measuring the percentage of the lot and seeing where we are with that. Um, because I may have already sp spent all the good stuff, I don't know. Um, so we just have to see how it goes. Uh, total average strength of the alcohol at 44 minutes. Here we go. Um, it's just about 40% ABV. Now this will make some sense because I've made a lot of little mistakes on the way and I've been impatient and I've started the distillation early. Okay, So this is a relatively low percentage but if we carry an increasing, you know, just distilling as much as we can out of what we've got then maybe we'll still have some good stuff we can use. Okay. That's about 500 milliliters being half a liter, which has come off within 51 meet, uh, minutes of me turning the still on. And you're still dripping. No matter how much I get off or how strong it is, I'll keep the spirit and then we'll use that for another run. Okay, so it's just belief beneath 30%. It's about 650 milliliters worth of volume though. On the first run, taking into account all the mistakes that I made with the fermentation, with setting the yeast up and all the rest of that, I suppose that's quite believable. Um, just going to do a few more runs, get all the distillate together, then we'll eventually do a distillate run and see what we can do from that and see if whether we can improve it. Maybe we'll be able to get just tonight like one gallon at 30 percent and then we'll be able to turn that into a 60 or 70 percent litre or two. Okay, this is something you need to know. All right, something you seriously need to know. I'm on the second, um, the second batch of the first run and I've taken a little bit of the alcohol which comes straight out of the still onto a spoon and I set fire to it and it actually burned, okay? So I realized that there was something about that which was strong enough to be able to burn. I took the rest of the alcohol that was um, collected, I put that into the trial jar, I put the hydrometer in it, it worked out about 60%. So 60% and above will burn. Okay, let's see if we can have a repeat performance and have the first ever ethanol fire in my flat. 
made with ethanol that I've made myself from sugar which I bought, which I fermented at home and I distilled at home. There we go. I hope you can see that. We've got a nice blue flame straight from the still onto that spoon. Nice bit of heat coming up off that. Mm -hmm. And that there is bioethanol. So, we've all got the technology to make it. We've all got the technology to distill it. Anyone can buy a distiller, provided of course you've got the patience to do lots of runs and you can improve your art at fermenting and distilling. There you go, safe fuel. safe to burn indoors fuel so you can have yourself. Sure it's going to be you know a bit of a pain for the average individual to go through the process of fermenting and distilling but let me put it to you like this huh? you can do it I can do it Now we're working up to another half litre at about 50% alcohol by volume. So it's pretty amazing. If you put your nose near the opening of that vessel there and you just like breathe it in like it's powerful. You know we have a serious combustible something or others here. But of course this is not a perfectly efficient still so you know there's going to be some loss. So loss to the air, loss in terms of vapour and so on and so forth. Um, so it's, it's going to be difficult. But on the other hand, it's still doable. I'm, I'm proving here that this is actually doable. It's time consuming, it takes up electricity maybe, but it is actually achievable. You can with equipment that you can buy off eBay, namely uh, the cheaper 80 pound still, which of course I've modified through putting that bit of rubber band around the um, little opening on the, on the worm itself, um, create alcohol which is of definitely drinkable strength, obviously burnable strength as well, because I've shown you that you can burn it. This is doable. It's a, it's a lengthy process. It's a little fiddly. You can't do it without the spirit hydrometer. The spirit hydrometer is essential for you to know what you're making, how much you're making, how strong it is going to be, and so on and so forth. All right, And you've still got to do many, many runs to be able to get to where you want to go. And it'll still take lots of fermentation. Just a bit of extra background. Now, the tails, which is what was left inside the distiller after I've been doing a run of distillation, has been put back into the barrel uh, with like the remaining bit of like yeast and, and sediments and the rest of it. And it's still fermenting, okay? There was still some alcohol in the tails. I wanted to keep them so I could re-ferment that, carry on purifying what I've got, and try and get myself a higher percentage, higher percentage all the time. And hey presto, it's fermenting with all the other stuff, so we, we can still get a good percentage out of that come, let's say, Wednesday. Alright, so I'm making burning alcohol now, or indeed cleaning alcohol. I could use this to clean my flat if I really wanted to. It's strong. And also, I can, you know, I, I, I'm making more stuff here. It, it's fermenting, so I can do more. What lessons have we learned? Number one, it's advisable to pay real close attention when you're doing your fermentation. That's the first thing to do. That's the most important thing to do. Everything else will stem from that. Okay? And apart from that, just, just carry on doing it. You've got to do lots of runs. Um, you, you, you can't just buy four liters worth of alcohol and distill that and purify that because it's just not enough. It's worthwhile getting yourself five gallons like I've done here or indeed many units of five gallons. Collect all the first runs together and do one big distillation of that, okay? And then use all the tails and go through that and purify it. Lengthy process, lengthy process, but doable. That's my point. You know, one of these days I'm just going to do a video of me sitting down and relaxing by an ethanol fire with ethanol which I myself have made using this process. Okay, you're not just going to see me sitting down reading a book or dipping into a Kindle thing or whatever. Just like enjoying a roaring fire that's burning ethanol which I myself have distilled. Alright, this is a serious moment of pride for me that I have made 
fuel. Proper combustible fuel. Dripping like, you know, nectar from heaven or something similar to that kind of thing. And it's absolutely fantastic, amazing. Uh, so these, you know, these might not be the top of the range air stills, but these things are still usable. Okay, these 75 or 80 pound jobs from eBay, you can still use them to help make spirit. And you can use that spirit for burning. It takes a few runs, but you can do it. Now, the next one after this one, I'll be getting to an even higher level of um, level of alcohol strength, and with that, you know, we're you know we're we're making gas basically. And I can put that through my little alcohol stoves, and we are sorted. So this is great. This is wonderful. Thank you very much for watching. This has been a great journey for me, and I've really enjoyed it. But remember, if you're going to distillate. Remember to ventilate because just breathing in the fumes here, you know, it's it, 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 the air is very pregnant with alcohol. So, you know, I'm feeling just um, a little bit more relaxed and, and talkative than normal. <laughs> so be careful of that, okay? It can't be good for you. Remember, this is not for drinking. This is for fuel purposes only. I myself do not drink alcohol. I've been off it for over eight years and I'm going to stay that way. Uh, and I strongly recommend that everybody else keeps off it as well. Alcohol is meant to be burnt. It is not meant to be drunk. Okay? So make sure you get that clear inside your head. Um, and this is a great way of making it. Remember, it's a 2007 legislation which says as long as you keep good records, you can, you can have your own alcohol. 2,500 liters worth of fuel alcohol for cooking and heating your home. And also for hot water, I suppose. Alright, so long as you keep good records of all your fermentations, all your distillations, and the results of it. So that just in case you get investigated by the customs and excise people, you know, you've got something to show them to prove that you're okay. That's the UK re regulation. It might not be applicable in your country. You'll have to check your own local national rules. Okay, local national laws. And be careful, because this stuff is flammable. It's like having your own gasoline plant in your house, basically. Okay? And all from yeast. Now, according to the, um, the, the Stephen Harris website I had a look at, you can even use regular baker's yeast. As long as you ferment for 14 days, if your patient's not impatient like me, and you ferment for 14 days, uh, and you can use regular baker's yeast, and you can still get 14%. It's only turbo yeasts, which go up to 16%. And, um, and it's only these like super super turbo yeast which go even you know go even heavier, but of course the 24 hour yeast can still provide you with the 14 or 16 percent within 24 hours. So that's going to be the type of yeast I'm going to be experimenting with next. But yes, I'm once again proud of my distillery. Um, yeah, I love it very much. Beautiful thing. Uh, you know, and I'm proud of what I'm making here. I've seen it burn. It's oh, it's sexy. And so, yeah, it's, it's absolutely tremendous.